Welcome to webinar four. For this webinar I'll be speaking with you about some online resources that work very well on the smart board and depending on what browser you use I like to use the Firefox browser because there are a couple of things that it provides you with that I think are very helpful when you're using the smart board. First thing I'm going to tell you about is an add-on for Firefox. It's called the Flash Game Maximizer. If you do use the Firefox browser you can just do a search for Flash Game Maximizer and what it allows you to do is to enlarge Flash games to full screen. So as an example on the lower left side you see a game that is on Mr. Nussbaum's site and it's surrounded by banner ads and some other ads along the side and what Flash Game Maximizer allows you to do is to just focus the student's attention on the game because it eliminates all of the extra graphics and things that might be distracting the student. So the way that it works, whenever Flash Game Maximizer detects content that can be maximized, you'll see a little letter G light up in blue. And if you tap on that letter G, you will have a choice of the flash content that the software has detected and sometimes it's very obvious sometimes it'll be trial and error until you find the right window that will be expanded to full screen so that's one if you use the Firefox browser I highly recommend that you use it is free so my favorite websites that I and some of my colleagues have looked at over the past several years are very interactive for students. Now some teachers seem to think that websites with a lot of text are fun for students but I think that's a false assumption. I think the website should be visually appealing and colorful, have maybe some sound effects or music playing in the background, and they can be fun and educational at the same time. So I have a long list of sites that I'll be sharing with you but the ones that I'm going to demonstrate very quickly for you now are the Tess iBoard, Shepard Software, Mr. Nussbaum's website, Smart Literacy that Chuck Estep and I put together, and Smart Measurement that Sherry Hunter and I worked on. You'll find all of these sites and a lot more on my wiki and there's the URL. I do have this URL posted on the Moodle so you don't have to worry about trying to write all that down and when you get to that page you're going to click on the link that's pretty far down the page it says interactive whiteboards which is kind of the generic name for a smart board and before we go on I just want to see if you remember how to link to a website in notebooks. I want to use this one here as my example. What I'm going to do is double click on this text box. And I'm going to select my text and I'm going to copy. I'm going to go back to my computer keyboard to do a control C to copy it. And now what I need to do that I've selected an object. If I wish to turn that object into a link, I'm going to hit the little menu arrow I'm going to go down where it says link and remember we have a lot of different things that we can link to. We can link to web pages, we can link to other pages within this notebook file. So the very first choice there, web page, is the one that I want. So again I'm going to return to my computer keyboard. I'm going to hit control V to paste to my URL. And then if you'll recall we have the option of either clicking a corner icon which looks like a little globe or we can click on anywhere on the object to activate that hyperlink. I actually prefer the corner icon. So once I say OK, you'll notice now on the lower left, left hand side of my text box is this little globe. And when I click on that globe, that globe is the hyperlink that will take me out to my web browser and open up that web page for me. So here now is my wiki page we have to scroll down and you'll see a link that says interactive whiteboard aka smartboard that's where I'm going to 
tap on my smart board right now. You can see that it's quite a long page, jam-packed full of information and websites. Hundreds or thousands of different interactive sites. So please don't be overwhelmed. But there are a lot of really great sites out there. So the first one that I'm going to demonstrate for you is called Tess iBoard. Now this site used to be completely free. It is now subscription based, but there still are lots of free activities. So I want to just kind of scroll down the page here to do a little demo. You'll see that they have ages listed. They also have subjects listed. Now one thing I need to point out to you, anything that has a red plus sign, those red plus signs tell you that that is content that's only available to subscribers. And you can get a 30-day free trial or you can pony up the uh, subscription fee. But there are still quite a bit of free activities out there. You may have to do just a little bit more searching for them. So you'll notice I have some different age groups at the top. I'm going to pick ages 9 through 11. And now below my age group, I have all of my subjects listed. So I'm going to go to numeracy, which is a fancy way of saying math. And on this page, as I scroll down, you'll notice, first of all, that there are 11 pages or more of activities. And you can see right off the top of the list here, there are a few here that are, uh, are free. So I can scroll through the list. This one happens to be about angle estimates and then measuring angles. So I'm going to take a look at that one very quickly. You'll see here that it gives you a description. And this big play button will actually start this activity. I like this site because they are full screen. There's a little ad at the top that's promoting a subscription to their website but other than that I don't see any ads so you'll see here for step one it says first estimate the angle I have a little keypad over here so I'm gonna say 15 degrees and now I have a protractor that will allow me to actually measure the angle now you can actually click on the protractor to rotate it you have to use the little buttons over to the right side that allow you to rotate it either in 30 or 10 or 1 degree increments. So I'm going to rotate that around until I have my protractor lined up. There we go. And now I can see, whoops, I think i got to go one more. And now I can see that angle measurement really does look like it's 15. So I'm going to type that in and say check. And it tells me that I'm spot on. And it shows me that I made a great estimate and I have an arrow now that will take me to another one and the process starts all over again so I'm going to estimate this one is 25 degrees and there's my protractor and lucky me it's already lined up and it looks to me like that one's 30 degrees so if students can estimate the angle then they can actually practice measuring the angle so my estimate was 25 I was under by 5 degrees, but that still was a pretty good estimate. So that's just some of the things that you'll find on the Tess iBoard collection of interactive websites. Another one that I want to share with you is called Mr. Nussbaum. There really is a Mr. Nussbaum. He uh, actually put a picture and a little bio on the main page. And you'll notice there are grade levels and also um, subjects listed here at the top. And I'm again going to go to math. He has some of his more popular games, the featured math games, featured math workshops. A little further down, he has a lot of different categories for math, including geometry, telling time, fractions. Then he also has a category that's just called math games, and that's where I'm going to go right now. And you can see that he has them broken out in different grades and age ranges. 
So I'm going to do one here that's called Mathamorphosis. Whatever page that you've selected, he has now uploaded some videos that will give you an overview of the game and how to play it. And then next to that you'll see I have a large button that says click here to play this game. It will take the game a minute to load. And I can choose either addition or subtraction. So very large colorful buttons. So I have an equation 4 minus 2 and I find the answer by tapping on one of the leaves. And you'll notice first of all I have an egg and then as the egg hatches I have a caterpillar and the more answers that I get right the caterpillar begins to eat and gets a little bigger and I think you can see where this is going eventually it will turn into a chrysalis and finally into a butterfly as I answer more and more questions correctly so hundreds of different activities that Mr. Nussbaum has on his site and certainly I'm sure you'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. I'm not sure what the annual subscription fee is. But that would eliminate the ads. And some of his games do work in conjunction with the Flash Game Maximizer if the ads do become distracting. The next one on the list that I'm going to demonstrate for you is from Shepard Software. You'll see that they have some very colorful icons that represent the different subjects. You'll notice that if I scroll down a little further, it shows me preschool and kindergarten. These are the some of the featured pages for the different grade levels. Okay, I have one here for middle school, high school, and it says vocabulary SAT prep. So I'm going to go to that one. And I have some that are pretty much flashcards, not really exciting to look at, but they do have kind of a fun game. that you can play. It says click and drag with the bubble wand to blow a bubble around a sea animal. And as I do this, I'm going to be presented with uh, some words that I'm going to need to define. So let me see if I can do a few of these and hopefully I'll come across an actual word. I'm not doing so well right now. I was hoping I'd have to do less catching and more questions to answer. Finally, okay, here's a word inexorable means, and I have five choices. Not to embarrass myself, but I'm not sure if I actually know what that means, so I'm going to make a good guess. Nope, I'm wrong. Correct answer was E unyielding. So you can see there's some rather high-end words here and of course I go back and I play the game some more and I have to draw bubbles and here's another one. Discreet means sneaky, scandalous, bookish, reserved, or boring. I'm gonna say sneaky. Nope. Means reserved. Okay. I'm not doing so well. So again, on their website they have all the different subject areas and that one is uh, some rather high-end vocabulary so it's even possible to use some of these sites with middle school and high school age students. The next one that I want to show you is one that Chuck Estep and I worked on. It's a little bit further down the page. It's called the Smart Literacy Wiki. What we try to do is to find and evaluate some websites that relate to reading and writing. So if I scroll down this page a little bit further, you'll see now it says reading and writing. And under the categories of reading, I have letter recognition, word recognition, phonics, vocabulary. And under writing, I have grammar and usage, handwriting, punctuation, and spelling. So let me see if I can do one for spelling. And you'll notice we've broken it down um, by all grade levels, K through 2, 
And a little further down, we have some for 3 through 8. Uh, there's one that's called the Daily Jumble. Do you remember the Daily Jumble? used to be in the newspaper when people read newspapers. Now, um, I will end up pausing this video because there's going to be a, an ad that loads, and it's probably about a 15-second commercial. So I won't subject you to that. I just have to wait it out. Okay, so I'm back. The commercial has played. My puzzle has loaded. Now, this one works with the Flash Game Maximizer. So you'll notice, in addition to my puzzle, I have uh, some of this other stuff over to the right side that's taking up some valuable space on my board. In the lower right corner, you'll see that I have a little blue letter G. That's telling me that I have flash, con flash content that I can maximize. So I'm going to hit that. And now it's uh, giving me five different examples of something that's flash content. So I have to make my best guess. And I'm going to guess it's going to be this one called Jumble Control. And I'll say OK. And now it's loading the game again. And it's going to be full screen. Much easier to see from the back of the classroom. OK, so now I have my words. They're all jumbled. And all I need to do is drag the letter to where it goes. And if you'll recall, the letters that are circled are going to be used to solve the little cartoon puzzle over there. I have a timer. I have a, a scoreboard. I have time bonuses. And then I have one, two, three, four words. So again, all I need to do is drag the letters where they go. And if I run out of time, I have a button that says give up. I also have a way to print the puzzle so students can actually work on it at their seat. So I'm going to say give up so it can solve the puzzle for me. And they have a new one of these every day. And I think you can actually go back and play some of the games from previous dates. All right, the last one that I want to share with you is Smart Measurement. And that's one that Sherry Hunter and, and I had a lot of fun putting together. As you can imagine, these are all websites that are related to various aspects of measurement, whether it's time or money or temperature. We're quite proud of, of this. We've had uh, people from all over the world access it. Uh, I'm going to pick one here called Perimeter and Area. And again, you'll notice we have it broken up by grade band. There's one that's called uh, Everything You Wanted to Know About Perimeter and Area. And it provides a nice lesson in how to calculate either perimeter or area. So first of all, you click on the shape. Do you want to learn about perimeter or do you want to learn about area? So let's do area. And you'll see I have a lesson here. I can kind of walk the students step by step through how to determine the area of a rectangle. So if I tap on the rectangle, it's going to give me the length and the width. Tell me how to calculate that. It'll talk about units. I hit the next button and now I have three levels of difficulty to um, try to calculate some some areas so I'm going to do the easiest one here and you'll notice on level one here it has a rectangle it shows me 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters and they've already given me the units all I need to do is type in my answer so I tap inside the box I can either return to my computer or if I want, I can push the button on the tray that gives me my pop-up keyboard. There we go. So again, I have some more examples on how to, uh, to calculate area. So I encourage you to check out more of the links that Sherry and I have found. We provide a nice little summary of each one. We did our best estimate as to which grade level it's appropriate for. And again, all the different areas are listed over here. We have temperature and time. So please check out all of those resources that I recommend. And certainly there are even more than that on my wiki page.